I was so honored to be part of Blackfish because it really is a film that exposes what we've all known happens behind the scenes at these uh, marine mammal entertainment facilities. And it was thrilling to work with some of the ex-trainers because they really were on the ground. They know. They were there. And to see all of that come together was, was really thrilling. I think it, the, the, the film represents an exploration, um, a very objective exploration of what happens behind the scenes at SeaWorld and some of these other like-minded places. Sure. sure, dolphin assisted therapy is a worldwide industry um, whereby you get into the water with typically a captive dolphin and you are promised um, everything from a cure for autism to a cure for AIDS or cancer and everything in between. Um, and I've done a lot of research looking at the claims of the dolphin assisted therapy industry and I can tell you unequivocally that it is a scam. It's a worldwide scam that not only exploits dolphins but exploits desperate people as well. Yeah, you know, it's so interesting because the only reason that dolphin assisted therapy is such a popular industry is because it, it, it hits the button in almost everyone that says that we love dolphins, the dolphin mythology. Um, without that dolphin mythology, it wouldn't thrive. You've never heard of, you know, giraffe assisted therapy. We, there is, we come with a mythology about dolphins that the dolphin assisted therapy industry exploits, knowing that a desperate parent, for instance, will find it not too difficult to believe that their child can be cured of autism by swimming with this animal. Dolphin assisted therapy and dolphin captivity is not wonderful because it, it uh, exploits and limits the uh, autonomy of the dolphins. It exploits the emotions of humans. It puts two beings together in a confined space that should not be together in a confined space. And, um, you know, when people think of these dolphins as being happy to be with kids, you know, they're often um, overlooking the fact that they don't really have a choice. And they're not smiling. They are um, being uh, basically confined um, to be exploited. And uh, no one wants to believe that, but that really is what's going on. Uh, charismatic megafauna is uh, a, a term used to describe a certain group of animals that we think of as being sexy, cute, attractive, intelligent, elephants, lions and tigers, dolphins, chimpanzees, gorillas, and, uh, and these kinds of animals who, you know, we tend to focus on in terms of conservation and concern. Um, but uh, obviously that leaves out all of the little slimy, not too attractive beings who also deserve our attention. Well, I don't think we should recognize other species as moral equals so much as on a par with humans. So I don't think, well, at least I'm not saying and my colleagues aren't saying that to be a cetacean is to be a human, is to be a gorilla. It's not, they're different, we're different species. But what we're saying is that the experiences of being a cetacean and a gorilla and a human are on a par enough to warrant uh, moral concern. And um, to, to show that these are the kinds of beings that really um, suffer in very similar circumstances to the way we suffer. Understanding other animals is about understanding the difference and the sameness at exactly the same time, simultaneously. And that's true for octopus, for honeybees, for chimpanzees, and that's very difficult for us to do, but that's what we must do in order to really understand who we are in relation to them.